Well, hey guys, I hope your week is going well and that you've been enjoying the vids and your summer vacations and what have you. Today I'm excited to review for you guys a sunscreen that many of my Canadian viewers have been requesting me to try out and review and I'm really excited to have recently obtained it. It is the Garnier Ombrelle SPF 30 UVA UVB Complete Lightweight Lotion. Um, this is sold in Canada by Garnier and it is a phenomenal sunscreen. I'll talk about the ingredients briefly. Um, but it has Mexeril in it. Many of you have asked me if I could speak about Mexeril, so I thought in trying out the sunscreen and reviewing it for you all, I would take it as an opportunity to talk a little bit about Mexeril or the, the filter that is present in this sunscreen, as well as a variety of other sunscreens in Europe. Um, and I don't think many sunscreens in Japan use Mexeril. I could be wrong about that, at least those that I've come across. Japanese sunscreens largely use Tinosorb and Uvenol, but I could be wrong in that. Maybe perhaps some of them do. But regardless, this is, for those of you who are not familiar, this is a chemical sunscreen and it has uh, wonderful filters in it for both UVB and UVA protection. It is SPF 30, meaning that that number is a reflection of the ability of this sunscreen to protect you from a burn which is largely due to UVB. UVB is the wavelengths of ultraviolet light that come from the sun, directly damage the DNA in our skin cells, cause skin mutations, is carcinogenic, and also is responsible for a sunburn. So the SPF 30 tells you about a sunscreen's protection against the burning and mutagenizing UVB rays but it gives you no information about the UVA protection in the sunscreen. UVA, for those of you who are not familiar, also comes from the sun. It's a type of ultraviolet light that, unlike UVB, penetrates much more deeply into our skin and is responsible for photoaging the skin. Wrinkles, fine lines. It also suppresses the immune system in the skin and sets the stage for skin cancers down the road. So while it does not really burn our skin and when we go about our day-to-day -day life, we don't appreciate UVA much in our brains, uh, it really, really, really has long-term and mega consequences on the health of our skin. Furthermore, UVA is not filtered down by glass. So if you predominantly are indoors most of the day, do not fool yourself into thinking that you are protected from the sun. I have a whole video on different types of glass and the protection that glass affords from ultraviolet light while we're indoors and in our vehicles, automobiles, etc. But do know that uh, you're, even if you're indoors most of the day, chances are you are exposed to UVA to some degree, okay? So, you know, for the majority of consumers, they select sunscreens and usually to prevent a burn um, for the most part, like when they're going to the beach, when they're going outside, you will frequently hear people say, oh, you know, it's not summer, I'm not really out that much, it's not like I'm gonna be tanning or, or going out, I don't need sunscreen. Yeah, right, the sun comes up uh, and when the sun comes up, it doesn't matter if it's cloudy or gray out, UVA is, is affecting the health of your skin. And so it's very important to, you know, I mean, many of you, I'm sort of preaching to the choir, you come here for this, this information, but if it's new to you, it is very important to wear sunscreen on a consistent daily basis and reapply it throughout the day. I have a recent video all about kind of how to apply sunscreen, how much to apply, um, and uh, reasons why sunscreens fail. <laughs> so check that out. But very important to, to have your sun protection being an ongoing process. Now, the, the reason I'm enthusiastic about this particular sunscreen is that not only does it offer good UVB protection against those burning and uh, mutagenizing UVB rays, but it also offers superior UVA protection to chemical sunscreens that are available in the United States, okay? Chemical sunscreens available in the United States um, rely on the filter avabenzone for our UVA protection. 
All right, and the FDA actually restricts the amount of avobenzone in the sunscreens, um, but uh, avobenzone is a pretty good UVA filter. It actually expands a very uh, a large bulk of the UVA spectrum. It gets you, for those of you who are curious, both UVA1 and UVA2. But the real shortcoming with avobenzone as our protection against these deeply penetrating aging immunosuppressive rays, the UVA rays, is that avobenzone is not the least bit photostable. So when exposed to sunlight, it begins to degrade pretty quickly. So much so that within an hour of sun exposure, about 50% of the avobenzone in a US chemical sunscreen will degrade. We, in addition, to, in addition to there being a limit on the amount of avobenzone that our sunscreens in the U.S. can have, the FDA also restricts the presence of some additional filters in the product that could give you more UVA protection, some additional filters and some additional inorganic um, mineral ingredients like zinc and titanium cannot be combined with avobenzone in US sunscreens. So we really have our hands tied with our chemical sunscreens in the United States as far as those avobenzone, as far as our UVA, as far as our UVA protection, we're really limited. Um, you know, all sunscreens need to be reapplied every two hours while you're outdoors, but if you are relying on a chemical sunscreen with avobenzone in it as your, that's your UVA, um, you, you almost have to be reapplying every, every hour, I mean more or less, because you're losing about 50% of that UVA protection. And unlike sunscreens in other countries, we don't have a number on our sunscreens that tells us any information about how, how good that sunscreen is at protecting us from the UVA rays. We have the SPF, which tells us how good it is at protecting us from a burn. We understand 30 to 50 is a good number, but we don't have any objective information on the label to tell us anything about the UVA protection in that product. So as consumers in the United States, our chemical sunscreens are incredibly misleading and they just do not stack up to their to their, to their European, Japanese, international, Australian, any other country's sunscreens. They really just do not stack up. Uh, so that's why I'm always motivated to try these. But the Garnier Ombrelle um, contains the filter Mexeril. Uh, Mexeril was uh, first uh, patented by L'Oreal in 1982, and it was subsequently approved in Europe in like 1991, and then you know later became widely available in 1993 in Canada and Europe. So in sunscreens, it's actually FDA approved here in the United States, believe it or not. However, the FDA has this complicated um, you know, process wherein the ingredient itself is approved, but sunscreens have to kind of go through more hurdles and, and loopholes and <laughs> a lot of bureaucracy. And we only have one sunscreen in the United States that actually has Mexeril on it that I can find. Uh, it is a La Roche-Posay sunscreen, which unfortunately, while it has the Mexeril for UVA, it's SPF, the skin cancer protective factor is only 15. So it's not even, you know, I mean, it's like, really couldn't we have at least gotten a third, an SPF 30 or 50? But anyways, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here against, against the US chemical sunscreens. But um, the sunscreens in, in Europe, Japan, Canada, other countries, the chemical ones um, offer very reliable protection. Mexeril, gets you good coverage through UVA's entire spectrum, UVA1 and UVA2. Mexeril, like avobenzone, only filters out UVA. It does not filter out UVB. Therefore, it requires the presence of additional filters in the product to make it UVB protective, to make it SPF 30. And in this case, that's gonna be a homosalate, octocrylin, octisalate, and um, yeah, that's it. Um, so those are your UVB filters in this product. Avobenzone is present in the sunscreen at 3%. The avobenzone in this not only is stabilized by some of those UVB filters, but it's also stabilized within the Mexeril itself. 
So, you know, you're getting a, a really, you're getting three UVA filters in this product. You're getting Mexeril SX, which, the, which is the water-soluble uh, form of Mexeril, um, and you're getting Mexeril XL, which is the oil-soluble um, formulation uh, version of Mexeril. Mexeril is just a trade name. The generic name or the chemical name is a capsule for those of you who are curious. Um, but Mexeril is, you know, L'Oreal's proprietary jazzy name for it. Um, but they have their SX and XL in, in here. And Mexeril SX has a peak absorption of 340 nanometers, whereas Mexeril XL, um, XL is the oil soluble one, has a spectrum maximum absorption of 304 to 340 nanometers for those of you who, who are curious about these technical components. But both of those are wonderful UVA1, UVA2 covering UVA filters. Plus you've got avabenzone in there at 3%. And the avabenzone in this is stabilized by the presence of the Mexeril and the other filters. So when you put this product on and you go out in the sun, uh, after an hour, 50% of the avabenzone in this will not be degraded. That has been demonstrated. The avabenzone in this is much more stable than the avabenzone in our chemical sunscreens here in the United States. So this offers superior UVA protection to, to any, any chemical sunscreen in the United States. Now, when we hear that UVA is what's responsible for causing wrinkles, suddenly our ears perk up and we're more motivated to use sunscreens. Um, and for my, for many of you who view my channel, you know, your your you have joined joined my my bandwagon of sunscreen. Actually, is is really one of sunscreen and Retin A are like really your only. Uh, proven anti-aging ingredients and UVA coverage really is that that really is your your wrinkle cream your anti-wrinkle cream right there is is UVA protection um, however there are other reasons outside of, of wrinkle prevention and, and photo aging to protect against UVA there are many skin diseases in dermatology that are triggered by and or exacerbated by wavelengths of UVA and again to reiterate those are the wavelengths that will be coming in through the window. I have my window open right now, so it's hitting me right now <laughs> as we speak. Um, many diseases in dermatology are actually triggered by UVA. Polymorphous light eruption. I have a whole Q&A on polymorphous light eruption for you guys, so if you're, you suffer from that condition, for the most part, polymorphous light eruption, more often than not, is triggered by UVA. It can be triggered by UVB, and it, um, can be triggered by visible light, but for the most part it, it is often triggered by UVA. There are certain medications that can cause rashes, eczemas, itchy, you know, itching when you go out in the sun when you are exposed to light. More often than not, it is UVA that triggers those rashes in people taking those medications. So if you're taking a medication and your doctor has told you, hey, this medication can make you sensitive to the sun, it's, it's probably UVA that, that is contributing to that side effect, not UVB, all right? So you've really got to, if you're on a medication like that, you really need to, as a consumer, you really need to be able to make an informed decision about your, about your UVA protection, all right? So it's not just the skin aging thing. You will have an uncomfortable, debilitating rash if you don't protect your skin against UVA. For me as a dermatologist, I would really love to see here in the United States some just more transparent labeling with UVA so that consumers, particularly those, those patients out there with these photosensitive skin diseases, really can pick sunscreens that can keep them safe and help, help their disease. But unfortunately, we don't have that. But in other countries, you know, you have more reliable filters and are a lot more transparent about your UVA protection. But getting into the Garnier Ombrelle SPF 30 here, um, I really like this. I've been trying it out. First of all, what I love about it, um, disclaimer, one of a viewer sent this to me. I didn't actually purchase it. So thank you to the viewer who kindly sent this to me. But what I love about this is that you get a, a, a pretty sizable bottle here, 240 ml. That, that's, that's pretty big. You know, most most sunscreens come in these tiny little bottles. Um, and you know, this you can get this in SPF 40, I believe. 
Um, what I also love about this is that it is fragrance free, minimal ingredients. It's pretty much a nice moisturizing vehicle um, with chemical filters in it that uh, do the work of your sun protection. This functions, uh, this, this can serve as your moisturizer as well. There's no need to double stack this with a moisturizer. It's very lightweight, not going to break you out. Um, and it does not feel greasy or oily. They have admixed the, the oil soluble, water soluble variants of Mexeril in this product in such a manner to make a really nice lightweight lotion that uh, feels to me just like Neutrogena oil free moisturizing lotion or the La Roche Posay um, fragrance free moisturizers. Um, so you really don't need an additional moisturizer with this at all. Its main moisturizing ingredient, in fact, is glycerin. One of the things that people are fixated on and frequently comment about is the presence of alcohol denaturant. And, you know, for me, I don't really understand where this became so, you know, where all this inflammation around alcohol denaturant ar arises from. It, as a dermatologist, I've never, you know, come across any medical reports or seen any cases or heard discussed at meetings issues with alcohol denaturant in skincare products, particularly in sunscreens. You know, when we talk about drying, pro products that are drying, irritating, bad for sensitive skin that contain alcohol in it, we're talking about all of these toners, all right, that are, you know, basically largely alcohol that is very drying and can be irritating. But alcohol denaturant, um, you know, which is an alcohol, is present in a lot of these, a lot of sunscreens, chemical sunscreens, because it is important for the chemistry of the filters and, and, and how they are dispersed in the product and how they subsequently are able to set up on your skin. Um, you know, there are, there, there are good reasons why they're in there. Um, you want to apply this about 20, 15 to 20 minutes before going outdoors to give it adequate time for that film of filters to set up on your face, all right? Even though the avabenzone in this is stabilized, even though that Mexeril is very stable, you still need to reapply this every two hours while you are outdoors. So for example, if you're at the beach, at the pool, you still need to reapply it. You're going to sweat it off. It's not water resistant. Uh, you know, you're going to wipe some of it off, um, you're, you're going to sweat, it's going to come off. If you are not going outdoors throughout the day, you still need to reapply it periodically throughout the day. And my rule of thumb for sunscreens when you are inside all day and you don't go outside at all is to reapply the sunscreen three times a day. And, you know, the reason is you've got windows, you never know when the fire alarm is going to go off. Um, you know, and you might have to go outside. It's a behavior, you have to do it, and it's, it's better to keep up, keep up with it. Sunscreens are, you know, as I said in my Why Sunscreens Fail video, they're only as good as the user, and they all need to be reapplied, regardless of, regardless of how they are formulated, this one included. Um, but the nice thing about this is that the Ava Benzone, you're not losing within an hour, <laughs> like you would, like you would our chemical sunscreens here in the United States. An example of one would be the Neutrogena oil-free SPF 35 that I reviewed for you all recently. The um, Kula, Kula sunscreen, Kula Sport sunscreen that I got in my FabFit Fun box as a chemical sunscreen. Um, you know, Kiehl's has a ton of really expensive chemical sunscreens that all have the same limitation, you know. There, Kiehl's has like a $38 chemical sunscreen in it with, you know, avocado oil and avabenzone. Avabenzone's your, your anti-aging ingredient and 50% of it's going to be gone from that $38 Kiehl's sunscreen within an hour. So don't waste your money on that, that thing. But anyways... Um, Coming back to the umbrella, very lightweight um, and goes on really nicely. Not greasy, not heavy, um, but nice lightweight moisturizer. It reminds me a lot of the of the Elta MD UV Clear that I like so much. Um, it does have a, a slight um, odor to it that reminds me of the Huddle. It smells to me like the Huddle Labo sunscreens. And you all might detect that as alcohol, as the alcohol denaturant. For me, I'm not entirely sure, convinced that that's what it is. Um, but it smells, 
similar <laughs> to the Hadalabo chemical sunscreen that I've reviewed for you guys, the um, Hadalabo UV White Gel. Um, and you can see it goes on really nicely. No, no cast. Chemical sunscreens don't don't have a cast. It's moisturizing. It's it's very lightweight. I I've worn this in the gym. Um, as I said in recent videos, my new gym has a window in it, so I have been uh, really really conscientious to reapply before I go into my apartment gym. My old apartment gym didn't have any windows, um, but here here I do, and so I have been reapplying about 20 minutes before I go into the gym, and I have no problem running on the treadmill, sweating, working out. It's super humid and hot here. And I don't have any problem with this with sweating. It's very comfortable. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't make me sweat excessively. I've really been enjoying it. So I think this is a phenomenal sunscreen. Great UVA protection, great UVB protection. My one um, hold, hold with this, my one reservation with this is that I wish it were water resistant uh, because, you know, water resistant sunscreens, they just hold up on the skin a little bit better. If it were water resistant, however, you would still need to be reapplying it every two hours. Being water resistant doesn't get you out of that. You would still need to be reapplying it every two hours and you would need to reapply it after you get out of the water. It just gives you a little bit more insurance for the in-between in times that you're not sweating it off or, um, you know, uh, with the humidity and things, it's not kind of sweeping off a little bit more quickly. Um, it's just a little bit of an extra ins insurance, you know, it's like paying for, for a little bit extra on your collision for a car, but you, you still don't want to get in a wreck. <laughs> okay, so that that's how you can think of water resistant. And I'd like to see it for this. Um, I'm sure some of their others, they probably have water resistant ones as well, but, but um, you, you can get this on Amazon, the US Amazon. Um, so if you're interested in trying it, I'll list it down below. I really, I really like it. It also works really well on the body and you get this big bottle. So that's wonderful as well. But uh, uh, I'm sipping here. I've got Totoro with some of that Chaga Elixir. I'm totally jiving on the Chaga Elixir. Um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this review of the Garnier Umbrella. Comment below and if you're using it, those of you in Canada. Um, you had Canada Day a, a, several week, a few weeks ago, so happy belated Canada Day. <laughs> Too bad I didn't get this up on that day. That would have been more appropriate, but um, I hope you all enjoyed the review. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.